Hendricks and move to item 27, Commission General Regulation 456, Special Incentive Elk Arbitration Panel, LCB file number R031-15, Game Division Administrator Brian Wakeling for possible action. Um, I will spare the reading of this as uh, even though I should do it for nostalgic purposes with this being about the 10th time we've done it. But uh, we did workshop this yesterday in addition to what we have described uh, under the description in item 27. There were no changes that were advanced out of yesterday's workshop. Mr. Wakeling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, the only point I would make is uh, just to, to specifically state that uh, the proposal is to remove um, item number, the subsection three uh, that makes the decision of the commission or the uh, arbitration panel um, binding and, uh, and re removes all that language and takes item number four, moves it up to number three. Questions of Mr. Wakeling? Any discussion before I go out to public comment? Commissioner Hubbs? Thank you, Commissioner, or I keep saying Commissioner Chairman Drew. Um, I did have a question and some clarification I wanted on this um, arbitration regulation. Is that correct? It's going to be a regulation. Um, if it's not binding, we already have a process then for an appeal of some sort, or I'm just kind of curious as to if there's a decision made, what does that really mean? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Hubbs, um, when this rule, before this rule, the amendment was promulgated, um, the rule already contained the, the language that said it was, was binding. Um, when we, when the commission adopted the changes, um, we, we, which basically removed the arbitration panel from the local group to a uh, broader, it could be either be the commission or it could be in a, a panel appointed by the commission. Um, the, w the, we just incorporated that that binding nature in there. However, we referenced um, statutes, specific statutes, and also the the applicable uh, laws of the state of Nevada. And so, at that time, we believed that, um, and the, the legislative council bureau uh, examined it, did not question it, and we so we assumed that um, any uh, opportunity for uh, someone who was who availed themselves of the arbitration process, if they chose not to use this, could still choose to go to litigation. Um, what the uh, legislative committee or the legislative commission specifically asked um, was with this language they felt that it it would no longer it would not avail the arbitrant of that process and so they did not like this particular language in here from our per perspective from the commission's perspective a decision that's rendered by the panel or the or the commission if they act as the panel will still be the final step here um, but it doesn't contain language that limits uh, an, uh, an arbitrant's choice to uh, litigate. Okay, thank you. Additional questions or discussion? Seeing none, I'll open it up. County Advisory Board input on item 27, Special Incentive Elk Arbitration Panel. Public comment in Las Vegas. Public comment in Reno on item 27. No public comment in Reno. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Elko, are you still in an empty room? No comment from Elko. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll bring it back to the commission. If there's no further questions or discussion, I would entertain a motion on item 27. Chairman Drew, I'll make a motion. <laughs> Move to approve Commission General Regulation 456 Special Incentive Elk Arbitration Panel LCB file number R031-15 as presented. Second. I've got a motion by Commissioner Bliss and a second by Commissioner Wallace to approve CGR 456 relative to Special Incentive Elk Arbitration Panel LCB file number R013-15. <laughs> Are there any questions or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
All opposed? Motion carries 9-0. We'll close item 27 and move to item 28. Thank you, Mr. Wakeling. Potential congressional land transfer to the Moapa Band of Paiutes in Southern Nevada, Habitat Division Administrator Alan Genev for possible action. The department will present a brief overview of a potential congressional land transfer and discuss possible issues with wildlife management and public access in and around lands being considered for the transfer. The commission may choose to develop correspondence and provide input to the congressional delegation as part of their consideration of Senate Bill S. 1986. Mr. Janae. Over there. Thank you, Chairman Drew and members of the commission. Um, I had to sit down here just so that I could drive, um, just in case we wanted to zoom in on portions of the map. Um, I am here to discuss the S. 19, 1986 proposed by Senator Harry Reid to expand the Moapa uh, reservation lands by approximately uh, 26,000 acres. Um, you can see the areas depicted in green here. Um, I will try to zoom. Um, as far as wildlife concerns associated with it, you will see that um, it does go into Unit 268, uh, the Muddy Mountains, the Northern Muddy Mountains, uh, specifically the California Ridge area. Um, sorry, whoops. All right, I'm playing the, the microphone. So it, you can see on the eastern extent that it does go into the uh, California Ridge area in the Muddy Mountains in Unit 268. Uh, the southern portion, uh, I don't believe that we've heard much uh, sportsman concern or wildlife concern out of that. The western edge uh, of the Arrow Creeks, um, it does go into there, does go into sheep habitat. It is in rather close proximity, the, the western edge of it is rather close proximity to uh, Arrow Creek number one, uh, big game water development designed for uh, desert bighorn sheep, but the access does come from the western side of that range. Um, so it doesn't take in the Gessler, but it is in proximity. The northern extent, um, it's, it's much more the lower rolling hills of the Arrow Creeks, uh, and so wildlife concerns wouldn't be as great for the, the desert bighorn. Um, as I say, this is an expansion of approximately, proposed expansion of about 26,000 acres in its entirety. The bill is uh, rather succinct. There's no provisions for access. Um, the only mention that other than the description of the, the transfer and the lands is uh, that it would not be used, the extended uh, extensions would not be utilized for gaming. Um, and that's about it. It's a rather very short bill. Okay, before we open it up to questions, this is something while we were in Vegas I wanted to put on the agenda to get some inputs on. I think Paul had mentioned this at a previous uh, meeting. I did have an opportunity to look at the bill. It's literally two pages. Um, and, and references the map and references existing, I'm trying to remember how it, it states it, Alan, it's existing, um, not rights of way, but existing, basically any sort of existing uh, land uses, and I'll look up the language. But there are some concerns that I had, having had the opportunity to spend some time um, in the North Muddy Mountains over the past fall uh, in regards to access, and I don't know what the status is and if the roads in that part of the world, whether they be paved or, or dirt, actually have an existing right-of-way, but if they don't, there could potentially be some issues with access. Um, in the future, I don't know from a habitat standpoint if there's as big as an issue, but it looked like in the comments we got back from the county advisory boards, um, the comments were very much the same, and that is maintaining access to those existing uh, and future adjoining public lands. So um, that was kind of the intent on, on putting it in the on the commission radar. Um, and we do have the possibility for a proposed action here if we want to send a correspondence 
I did have an opportunity to ask uh, Senator Reed's staff what the status of this bill was. It had been introduced. It has not moved at all. It hasn't even had a markup or a discussion, uh, at least formally through the Senate of the United States. So it's unclear um, what would happen, especially in an election year. But if it were to move, it would probably move as part of a huge compromise bill right at the end. And that could move without a whole lot of input in a real fast manner. So if this body wants to be on record expressing any concern, she certainly invited us to do so. So that's, I guess, what I have to supplement what Mr. Janae has already stated. Questions or comments by the commission? Chairman Drew, um, <clears throat> I attended that Clark meeting and there was substantial discussion. And the fraternity of Desert Bighorn, of course, they were in attendance and they're pretty much against the whole concept because they're very concerned about access into these hunting areas. Um, well, I, I think it would behoove us to put together a, a letter and send it off to Senator Reed's office and perhaps Senator Hardy's office in addition to that. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Commissioner Hubs? I just wanted to say I agree with Commissioner Valentine. It sounds like uh, the earlier the better on something like this. If we wanted to reserve some type of access, it would probably be better sooner than later. Commissioner Young. I agree with uh, Commissioner Valentine. However, I think you ought to just send it to the entire congressional delegation, including the House of Representatives, not just the Senate, because just do it all at once. I agree. And, and the way we've done, just from a procedural standpoint, especially for some of our newer members, because we haven't done this lately, um, the way we've handled this in the past, and I'll look to my Encyclopedia Britannica is over here to the right of commission uh, procedure, but we've done it one of two ways, either assigned a person or two, two to draft a letter and bring it back to the next commission meeting for approval, or simply to assign uh, a person or two to draft the letter and send it out with the key concepts. So those are kind of the two options as we go forward once we take public input on this. Commissioner McNinch or Wallace, that's typically how we've handled letters of correspondence in the past, correct? Yes, uh, Chairman Drew, and usually that means that you ended up drafting those. So thanks for volunteering. Yeah, I've, got a, <laughs> I've already got a to-do list started here, so. Sounds like Commissioner Valentine has a lot of information though, Chairman Drew about this that he attended that meeting so you might pass it off to him yeah it would be good uh for both of us to work together on this i would welcome the help all right any other question or discussion from the commission i think that gives the audience a pretty good feel for where we're at with this item so county advisory board input on number 28 the potential land transfer or public comment in las vegas Okay, hearing none, is there any public comment on item 28 in Reno? No public comment in Reno, thank you. All right, we'll bring it back to the board. Is there any further question or discussion? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. If someone's comfortable making one. Chairman Drew, I'll try to make a motion. I make a motion that uh, the Board of Wildlife Commissioners prepare a letter to be sent to our delegation in Washington, D.C. to address the Moapa transfer of properties. Um, and Chairman Drew and Commissioner Valentine will work together on that letter. I second that. Okay, we've got a motion and a second from, a motion from Commissioner Valentine, a second from Commissioner Hubbs to draft a letter in regards to Senate Bill 1, uh, 1986 and the potential congressional transfer to the Moapa Band of Paiutes in Southern Nevada. Is there any question or discussion on the motion? I guess I would just point out uh, my intent based on the cab feedback that we got and the discussions we had today is to primarily focus our main concern 
around uh, access to adjoining public lands, if everyone's comfortable with that. Okay, any further questions or discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 9-0. We will close agenda item 28. Move to agenda item 29. Future commission meetings and commission committee assignments. Secretary Wasley and Chairman Drew for possible action. The next commission meeting is scheduled for March 25th and 26th, 2016 in Yarrington. And the commission will review and discuss potential agenda items for that meeting. The commission may change the date and meeting location at this time. The chairman may designate or adjust committee assignments and add or dissolve committees as necessary at this time. Any anticipated committee meetings that may occur prior to the next commission meeting may be discussed. Um, one of the things that we had talked about last meeting that I'll start off with is, is looking to maybe move the meeting date um, because it does land on the Easter holiday, and I know there's some family conflicts uh, with that date. Um, I did visit with the department between meetings, and it looks like sliding it forward or back um, by a week is not feasible due to different scheduling conflicts. Um, moving it by two weeks may be a potential, but it gets us into some real issues with uh, noticing periods for both workshops as well as approval on... Um, on regulations and so I think in essence what we've got is we're stuck on the calendar. Um, Tony did I des describe that accurately? Yes Mr. Chairman um, and looking at our schedule and constraints with uh, workshop notices etc we looked at the three weeks in both directions there was only one weekend uh, in three weeks after or three weeks before, and that was two weeks before, which creates some uh, constraints with the noticing of regulations. As well as reissuing of all the cab meeting dates and everything else. So um, I think what we'll do, or my recommendation would be to keep the meeting dates the same uh, in understanding that there may be some potential family conflicts with some of our commissioners, and, and that is unfortunate. But I think um, at this point, we're kind of boxed in. So. Is there any further discussion on uh, the meeting date portion of this? Commissioner Young. Chairman, is there any chance we could uh, maybe go like Thursday half day and all day Friday, get done on Friday? Good Friday? Is that Good Friday? Yes. Tony, would that be possible? I'm checking uh, the calendar right now. There certainly it depends on the availability of the venue as well, and it's at the Lyon County Commission Chambers, so we would need to verify the availability of that, and then also look at potential for other conflicts on that Thursday. Yeah. The one thing that I'll throw out, and this is more in regards to future items, but while we're in Mason Valley, there's a really good opportunity. Um, to visit both the Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area as well as the Mason Valley Fish Hatchery. And so my hope is that we could build that into a partial day, whether that be on Friday or Saturday or Thursday. Um, so, Tony, one of the options we could do um, is if we need a formal action to do this, we could add March 25th to provide us some flexibility. And even if we do a field tour Thursday afternoon, um, at least it would give us that option and we can look for potential conflicts and see what, what the calendar looks like. But it would give us maybe some flexibility within a three-day window. This 24th, what did I say? You said 25th, but you mean that that Thursday is a potential day which gives us a three-day window to work in. And I don't, I don't see an obvious conflict on that Thursday, but certainly we'll need to canvas staff and the facility, most importantly, the facility and the availability of the facility. But we could certainly uh, look into that sooner than later and communicate our results back to you. And I, I would just note uh, that if the Lyon County Commission Chambers aren't available on that Thursday, there's probably other venues available uh, in Yerington if we had to change locations if we had to do that that would I would think uh, there might be even a venue that be free of charge at uh, the convention center um, at Pioneer Crossing 
Okay, thanks, Commissioner Johnston. That means you volunteered to help out if we need to find some. Any further discussion on dates? Commissioner McNinch? Thank you, Mr. Does that, does that alleviate the, the conflicts, the resolve the, if we move that up a day? I think it alleviates at least one of the conflicts, okay. but perhaps not all of them. Easter Sunday's kind of a big deal at some, you know, my wife's a good Catholic. I'm not saying I am, but I'm, when I'm not driving home on Easter Sunday, you know. Fair enough. I think um, what I'll do at the, the end of the discussion here is I may ask for a motion just to add the possibility of March 24th. So we have a three day window to see if we can alleviate at least a couple of those conflicts. Um, just to try and in the spirit of trying to keep as much of the commission together as we can at kind of an important family time. I completely understand you, that. You guys so. went a little later in, in the evening, Jeremy. It wouldn't be that big of a deal, you know. Okay. At dinner or something. Mike, please, just so the uh, northern people can hear us next time, Commissioner. Thanks. The northern contingent. So what's on the table is a possible um, addition of March 24th to our dates, uh, just so to provide some flexibility over the Easter weekend to avoid family conflicts. Um, Secretary Wosley, did you have a list started for possible future items for that meeting? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Uh, just to confirm the uh, date again, March 24th, 25th, and possibly 26th in Yarrington, tentatively at the Lyon County Commission Chambers. The primary order of business will be to set and revise waterfowl seasons and limits. This will be the first time under the new season framework that this has been uh, set in March. It's traditionally addressed in August, but due to the new federal framework, uh, this will be occurring uh, in, in March. Uh, we also will hear the uh, draft 2017 predation management plan again uh, as an action item. Commission General Regulation 458, which includes uh, smart trigger, smokeless powder, and cartridge length and caliber restrictions will be workshopped again, as will Commission General Regulation 459, the unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, the, the drone regulation will be workshopped again. And I also have the uh, bighorn sheep disease surveillance and herd performance that was originally on this agenda, but due to staff illness, uh, we'd like to uh, present you with that again in March. And then I have two committee meetings, one for the administrative procedures, regulations, and policy committee, and one for the Tag Allocation and Application Hunt Committee. So are there additional thoughts on those committee meetings while we're talking committee meetings? And are there others that might be coming up as well that we should know about? Commissioner McNinch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, Director Wassley, are we, are we, did you have an agenda item for the commission for the, the Administrative Procedures Committee? Let, let's, if we could, let's plan on uh, possibly taking some action on, on our uh, policies one, three, four, and the NAC, the, the rules of practice. I think we need to get those. Uh, we intend to meet prior to that and uh, take it out to CAB input, and then we'll, we'll see if we can get action from the commission to approve those so we can get our affirmation back to the Secretary of State. Commissioner Bliss, I think you had policy 23 ready to come before the body as well. Yeah, we have uh, policy 23 and then we will uh, have a committee meeting as well to go over the predation management plan prior to the commission meeting. Commissioner Johnston, while I'm at that end of the table, you guys will have one more tag application plan committee meeting prior to that. Yes, I believe we'll have the TAC committee will meet, but probably meet uh, not in conjunction with the commission meeting, but maybe a couple of weeks prior so that uh, we can work through the topic list and then have time rather than having to report to the commission the same day as the meeting, um, have something prepared for some concrete ideas that came out of the TAC committee. Uh, so we've, we've talked about uh, various locations that would be convenient for members of the committee to meet or, or participate by telephone. So I would anticipate that sometime in uh, 
late February, beginning of March or mid-March. Any other committee meetings that we anticipate, Heritage? I think it's more of a May issue for the Heritage, but uh, <clears throat> I haven't received anything from Kim on the policies that uh, the policy committee forwarded to the Heritage Committee. So if I have something on that, we may hold a quick meeting to work on those policies. If nothing else, maybe that would be better to be separate from the actual heritage decision. So that's a, <clears throat> maybe put a placeholder there, but until I get something from Kim to bring forth the heritage committee to work on that policy, I think I'm, I'm good. Okay, so we'll have a tag application allocation hunt committee meeting and administrative policies and procedures, and those will be separate and prior to the March meeting. We'll have a predation committee meeting and we'll look at the potential of building that in along with our main commission meeting or in conjunction with it. Is that good or do you need to be before? Um, the, com the committee meeting will have to be prior to the, this March meeting so we can give some input on the predation management plan prior to coming to the commission meeting. And I believe so it could, it could be like immediately before, or do you need it to be a week or two prior? Um, it could be immediately before. If the scheduling works, if there's not enough time, then I think we can make it work, um, you know, earlier. Okay. So I'll work with the committee and, and see where the dates line up with the future commission meeting and we'll set a time at that point. Sounds good. All right, the uh, only other items I have, and I don't know of any additional committee meetings that will need to occur between now and then. Um, we had discussed uh, quite a while ago about adding a human dimensions uh, discussion to our committee or our commission meeting. I don't know that March is going to be the time to do that. Um, maybe the next time we're in Vegas, actually, because I know Lauren is in Las Vegas or in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. So just a, a kind of a placeholder on that. Um, as I mentioned, I'd love to do a field tour at Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area, as well as the hatchery, so some of the, our folks can take a look at that. Um, it'll be dependent on where they get to, but the elk uh, management plan for Humboldt County may be ready for the March meeting. Uh, policy 23, we talked about. The other policies we talked about, and I think Director Wasley covered all the regulations. The one other um, update that I would like to get while we're in Mason Valley is if we could get someone from NIFWIF, and I know we have uh, folks that are friendly and that we know down there, but get an update on their project as it's geography appropriate. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we can definitely do that. As a matter of fact, uh, some of the NIFWIF staff have already reached out and, and offered that. Um, one, one other thing that uh, staff brought to my attention was we would also like to bring before you uh, have, the, have the first hearing on the industrial artificial pond permit regulation. Uh, we've just revamped that regulation in conjunction with industry and stakeholders and interested public, but we'd like to bring that uh, before you as well. Okay, so I'll work with staff because we're going to have a busy agenda, it sounds like. I'm getting that laid out. Any other commission comment or discussion on, on item 29, future commission meetings? Like I said, the only motion that I will be looking for when we bring it back is to add Thursday the 24th as a possible date to allow flexibility with the Easter holiday. Okay. So with that, I'll open it up. Is there any uh, county advisory board or public comment on item 29, future commission meetings in Las Vegas? How about in Reno? No public comment in Reno, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bring it back to the commission. Any further discussion or items we need to cover? If not, I would add uh, or entertain a motion on adding the possibility of March 24th to our meeting dates. So it essentially give us a three day window. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, add uh, March 24th as a possible date for our uh, 
for our March meeting uh, to create a three-day window, March 24th through the 26th, allow some flexibility. Second. So I've got a motion by Commissioner McNinch and seconded by Commissioner Wallace to add March 24th as a possible third day for our meeting. And I don't intend to add a full third day. It just gives us three days to fit in a day and a half to two day meeting. So is everyone clear with the intent? Any questions or discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously, and I will work closely with staff on figuring that out and possibly Commissioner Johnston on making sure we secure a venue. With that, I'll close item number 29 and we'll open item 30, public comment period. Persons wishing to speak are requested to complete a speaker's card and present it to the recording secretary. Public comment will be limited to three minutes. No action can be taken by the commission at this time. Any item requiring commission action may be scheduled on a future commission agenda. Public comment in Las Vegas, Ms. Myers. Hi, my name is Stephanie Myers. I live in Mount Charleston. And you don't hear me speak uh, here except concerning trapping. And the only hunt areas that I care about are the mountain lions and the, the black bears. So you won't hear me speak other than on that. Um, for many Nevadans, the ultimate goal in the hunting area is to see an end to hunting bears and mountain lions. So I am not anti-hunting except for those two species. However, we do share with the commission the additional goal of stewarding healthy populations of bears and mountain lions in our state. That is our goal in attending these meetings. Therefore, I respectfully submit that you not dismiss the factual information or the moral positions of any presenter simply because their position does not contribute to the continuation of hunting and trapping in Nevada. Respectful controversy is healthy. Dissent can improve understanding. Now there are extremists on both sides and we've heard that you've uh, received some disrespectful emails. We have also uh, had some very disrespectful uh, insults, but mostly at the cab level. So it's both sides. We are all Nevadans and our fellow creatures deserve the, con the consideration of all Nevadans. Ending discussion is not our goal and we thank you for slowly opening the door for discussion. Thank you very much. Additional public comment in Las Vegas. Mr. Chairman, Maureen Hellinger for the department. I'd like to make a correction. I looked up the NAC in regards to the bear waiting period for CAB member Sean Shea. It's five years instead of three. And that's for a successful applicant? For both, if for they both. just draw a tag. Okay, thank you. Additional public comment in Las Vegas. All right, uh, public comment in Reno for item number 30. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, comments were made earlier in Las Vegas today. Could you please state your name, sir, so we yes, have it for the record? Alan Salini for the record. Comments were made earlier in Las Vegas today that people testifying in Reno on items 19 and 20, the mountain lion and bear hunts, were just anti-hunting and perhaps held extremist views. If that were true, don't you think at least one of the people sitting in this room would have also commented on item 21, item 22, item 23, item 24, item 25, item 26, or item 27? You're wrong about extremist views. We are people in the mainstream, and you should get to know us. Thank you. Thank you. Next public comment in Reno. For the record, Fred Volz, yesterday's report about Lauren Chase and his alleged human dimensions work may be feel-good therapy for wildlife killers, but it is predestined to perpetuate the wildlife killing mindset and discern how to message and market it. 
Chase does nothing to ascertain what the vast majority of Nevadans want for wildlife stewardship, the actual foundation of objective human dimension studies relative to wildlife management. Therefore, consideration should be given to inserting the word killing between wildlife and commission, as this is the commission's consistent objective and would more accurately represent what the commission actually does, which is maximizing death of the public's wildlife for entertainment, bragging rights, and profit. Lastly, it has been claimed today that all the public is listened to. Of course, claimed listening to the public is not the same as determining and representing what the general public wants in policy making. Then the obligation is to implement those preferences, not just the desires of endow licensees intent upon killing. Thank you. Next public comment, Reno. Uh, Elaine Carrick, Reno. Uh, I'd just like to thank Chief Warden Turnipseed and his wardens for all the work that they've been doing in finding people who commit wildlife crimes. It's really, really important work, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Next public comment in Reno. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Don Moldy, Reno, <clears throat> speaking for Nevada Wildlife Alliance. Uh, two quick things. <clears throat> Today, uh, Commissioner Johnson made a comment or uh, read some emails that he had received that were uh, certainly not respectful and I hope not reflective of uh, most of us. <clears throat> I would simply add that if I had kept a collection of those comments of that nature directed at me for the past 40 years, I would have several binders full of uh, such comments. Uh, and, and I had to kick a couple guys off our Facebook page this week for being jerks as well. So it sort of goes with the territory. <clears throat> um, but that's not what I really want to mention. I want to mention something else that I should have addressed perhaps in the past. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Wallace gave me an opportunity during the November meeting, which I passed, and uh, Commissioner Johnson mentioned something of this today. And that is that when we're here presenting our views, sometimes we speak as though we represent, quote, the public, unquote, uh, people who aren't here, but we think share our views. And periodically, we receive a challenge from you as to whether we, in fact, do represent the public or whether we don't. And, uh, and it usually is said, I guess, in a way to try to diminish uh, our opinions or our points of view. And let me just say that I don't personally believe that you represent sportsmen. And the argument is fairly easy to make. In this state, we have resident hunting licenses and trapping licenses totaling about 50,000. If you throw in 85,000 fishermen and, or so, and another 30,000 or so out of state uh, sportsmen who apply for licenses and tags, let's say we wind up with 180,000 sportsmen that apparently you claim to represent. Well, I have never seen 180,000 sportsmen at one of your meetings nor have I ever seen 10% of that number, 18,000, nor have I ever seen 1% of that number, 1,800, at your meetings, nor have I ever seen, well, a hundredth of a percent, I guess, would be 18. I have seen 18 guys at your meeting, a hundredth of a percent, maybe even two one-hundredths of a percent, because I saw about 40 guys in Elko at <clears throat> Mr. Wakeling's meeting. So. My point is that I don't say, well, and we also know from the Idaho cab studies, or the mule deer hunting studies, that most of the sportsmen, uh, the 700 or so that replied to that study, didn't know anything about cabs and really didn't want to know anything about them. So it seems to me we're both in the same boat. I don't see how you can claim to represent sportsmen any more than you claim that we don't represent the public. What, we're wind up, what we wind up with basically is the same core of noisy faces on both sides of the aisle that have enough interest to show up at these meetings and debate these issues. And it seems to me that we should go forward, I think, with that perspective in mind. You don't represent your constituents any more than you claim that we don't represent ours. We're here, let's have discussions, let's do business, let's work with the science, the numbers, and uh, try to um, reach some agreement that's you know, uh, beneficial to both sides, as was done today. 
So I thank the commission for its <clears throat> um, work on the bear issue today. I think it's a step well taken. And I hope that in the future we'll be talking mountain lions and trapping reform and other stuff that needs to be done as well. But let's dispense once and for all with whether we talk <clears throat> for the public or you talk for sportsmen. I don't think either of us can make that case. Although I must say that I think that the department ought to be doing surveys, not only of sportsmen, but of the general public, so that we truly do know what the attitudes are in both sides of the equation. Thank you. Next public comment in Reno. I believe that's all that's um, for public comment in Reno. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Reno. Thank you for your time today. And then Elko, one last call for public comment. No public comment and have a good night. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Get home safely. All right. That will adjourn our meeting and we'll see everyone in March.